it's sad because you get to a point where adults reinforce in these kids' minds that because you're good at basketball, that you get makes away you with a it. good human being. Yeah. It's like, no, being good at basketball makes you good at basketball. It doesn't make you a good human being. Like, you being a good human being makes you a good you human be, being. Absolutely. Not because your handles are good or you have a whole bunch of moves. Right. That just means that you're effective on the basketball court. But when right. you step off of that thing, who are you? Right. And welcome, everybody, to SFBA's hey. first episode yeah. podcast, YouTube, show, um, we're just here to help some people. That's it. That's what we want to do today. Yeah. So, yeah. obviously, you don't know who we are yet, um, unless you know who we are. So, yeah. we're here to introduce ourselves. But, yeah. um, man, we got to day one. How are you feeling? I feel great. Uh, I mean, three years in the making. You know, 2020 came, COVID hit. You know, everybody was in the house doing nothing. We dreamed this up. And then... Uh, yeah, three years to get something done. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, life comes at you fast. You know, things change uh, when COVID hit and it was over. Um, you know, we had to refocus. Um, we had to get back on track and uh, just like everybody else did. But I feel like this is a great way to kind of uh, revisit kind of where we were and uh, where we're going. So, yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's great. So to kind of get into it, uh, today's episode, we want to go through and give you guys some things that uh, you might want to know, first of all, who are we? Yeah. Why are we here talking to you? What's, yeah. what's the purpose? So, um, Coach, tell us a little about yourself. Oh, man. To me, I guess first, uh, um, I'm Coach Ken. I've uh, been uh, SFBA now. <laughs> Before it was SFBA, it was, uh, used to be YFE. Uh, eight years now. And um, I've loved every minute of it. Um, just a little bit about me. I started playing basketball like everybody else did at a young age. Um, just grew to really love it. Um, basketball did a lot for me uh, mentally, physically. Um, met a lot of great people, done a lot of great things. Um, and uh, yeah, so been coaching now for about 20 years now, um, off and on here and there. Uh, as I said, eight years ago, I walked into the gym at Ben Franklin Middle School in Daly City, uh, met Robin, and uh, he said, okay, yeah. Uh, go over there. There's like 20 kids over there. I was like, huh? Okay. So uh, I went over there. He had 20. I had 20. And then uh, we just kind of started building up from there. And it's been great ever since. So, you know, shout out to uh, Robin. And, you know, you, you come across all kinds of people when you coach basketball for a long time. And um, some good, some bad. Um, you never know why they're doing it or what they're doing it for. Um, but, you know, Robin's definitely one of the good ones. Um, program's yeah. great. Uh, his message is great. <laughs> Uh, we think a lot alike and his philosophies and how his approach is. And, uh, you know, again, I've said it to him many times, no one's doing what we're doing. And I, I mean that uh, in the sense that no one's doing it the way we're doing it, um, cares about it the way we care about it. Um, so I'll stick by that. I'll stick to those guns forever. So, yeah, uh, what yeah, about you? But he is right. We, we uh, got into a gym, and I remember we had 75 kids in there. Yeah. And you took half, and I took half. I did. <laughs> <laughs> we said, Let's just go. nobody else, just us two in there. So. Just us in there. Um, yeah. But yeah. Anyways, um, yeah. I'm Coach White. Uh, most people know me as Coach White. No. Um, again, if you don't know me, you don't know me. But now you will. Yeah. Uh, so I've been coaching basketball since about 2007, and then got into it working at a middle school after I graduated from San Jose State. Shout out the Spartans. Um, and I actually had no intentions of getting into anything like this. Mm -hmm. I whole goal in life was to go to medical school yeah then i kind of shifted to physical therapy school uh -huh. and then trying to do the rest of my prereqs and taking all the classes and then getting my hours inpatient outpatient at, man you, you know, were, clinics you and you're doing it for real you know, man um, that was you know, taking that's life. mcat you know pre uh, you know uh, practice exams and buying all the oh, books man um and then i was like i like working with kids i like coaching yeah i feel like i have some information around performance and how the body moves and I want to help kids around this and uh, that's kind of what went into um you know to the uh, disappointment of my mom didn't get it <laughs> <laughs> you know oh, are you sure you want to be a doctor yeah. it's like now I'm kind of nah, like I don't want to do that well maybe I do it mm. pays you know but right I think all of my prereqs are no longer valid anymore after 10 years yeah. So I have to go back and start over, and I'm not taking all those <laughs> I'm not doing it. Oh, no, um, yeah, it's tough. So anyways, yeah, I, I've been coaching, um, you know, did it just to help out, but I found a passion for it when I saw some kids that I felt, I don't want to say being neglected because I'm not trying yeah. to blame anybody, but that, you know, 
you were able to reach them a certain way when it came to sports. And yeah. somehow, once I was able to gain their attention through sports, yeah. I was able to get them to find a way to gain motivation in the classroom. Yeah. I used to do tutoring programs on weekends where I'd make them come out first to do homework at a library. And then after we did that, we went out to the field, to the basketball courts, and then we did some athletic performance stuff, then we did some basketball skill stuff. Yeah. And every Saturday I did that. And um, that was tough because it was trying to make sure I prioritized that and didn't get paid for any of that. I did it all for yeah, free for like years. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it, it was rewarding in the sense that you see kids that you feel if someone just gave them a chance. Yeah. It's not about winning or losing. It's just, you know, building relationships with other people, taking kids that maybe, you know, are not, you know, the best socially around other people. Right. And giving a chance to be around a group of people that can get to know who they are and then yeah. gain some friends. Yeah. Um, that's what it was about for me. And then, you know, since then, now we're here to 2023 and, yeah. Things have changed since then, but obviously um, I'm happy with a lot of the progress I've seen kids make that are now adults. Yeah. And that's crazy, crazy to say people look at you like, how old are you? It's like, I'm so old. I've seen kids when they were in elementary school yeah. now be very close to being 30. It's crazy so, to think about that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's where I'm at. Yeah. I mean, coaching is one of those things that you just kind of get sucked into. Because when I started YFE, uh, you know, again, we weren't getting paid for that. When we were doing a middle school, uh, Ben Franklin Middle School uh, basketball program, you used to coach how many teams? One year I coached six teams. Oh my God. And we did CYO and Park and Rec. Yeah. So yeah. I had to go from a daily city gym yeah. to some Catholic school in the city and then back. Yeah. Um, I don't know how it worked out, but it, it did. It, it was just. It does sometimes, <laughs> y'all. And, and again, I, I've coached multiple teams at one time as well. It's just one of those things that kind of sucks you in, and once you get it and you see their faces and you see the response that you get and you see that you can actually impact somebody's life with, with sport because, again, you've played sports um, and you know what it was like to feel like you belong. And I think that, um, you know, it's just something that really comes with the territory. Once you start, it's really hard to stop. So I feel like that's why we're here and that's why we're, you know, trying to figure out how to do all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Cameras. Um, yeah. Looking at a few things, and before we get into our main topic, um, I do want to talk about something that you brought up over the course of the past few years. And I remember the first time you said this to me, um, I was going to get barbecue um, for dinner in San Francisco. I forgot the restaurant's name. Yeah. And we were talking on the phone, and you said, like, we've got to get 10% better every day. And ever since that day, you've been saying that. Yeah. And that was the first time I ever heard you say that. And that, it was ever something that popped up to me. Yeah. What is 10%? 10% is a mindset um, for me. Uh, I think it's gonna be different uh, for a lot of people, but to put it in the simplest terms as, as I can, if I give you an example, um, basketball is something that I feel you can apply to any youth sport really, and it's just in your, in your general life. Um, it's a mindset, it's um, staying accountable and making sure you understand that every little bit you do will add up to great things. So if I give an example, we can say, if you train for 100 minutes, if you give 10% of 100 minutes, that's another two minutes. How many shots can you get up in another two minutes? Let's say 100. Quality shots. Um, now, that's 100 shots. Now take that out to a five-day week. It's 500 shots. Take that out to a month. It's 2,000 shots. That's 2,000 more shots, 2,000 more reps than that guy, than that guy. How much more work can you get done with just that extra 10 minutes? If you read a book and you did 10% more of reading or spent 10% more time reading, how many books can you read in a month, in a year? 10% more studying. If you study for a certain amount of time, get 10% more. There's so much that you can do in that little bit of time, that extra 10%. And I'm not saying just 10% over a whole. I'm saying 10% more than you already did. It's not going to take that much more time to get that much better at it. Because if you start to build on that, you'll start to do 10% more. And if you get into the habit, because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about being consistent, um, talking about developing good habits. And I feel like that's enough of a percentage, that's enough time to start to develop those good habits, those key habits that you need for consistent growth. I think people get really into the, I wanna see results now. 
they don't, they don't want to put the work in. So if I say I need 110% from you every single day, they probably won't come back the second or the third day because they can't give you that every single day because they haven't worked at that. But once you start to build in slow increments, you'll be able to get to a point where you can give a little bit more every time. And I feel like that extra 10% can add up to so much. So for me, that's the easiest way that I can explain what 10% is. It's a mindset, staying consistent, holding yourself accountable, and making sure you're always trying to do that little bit extra. Because you have to understand, especially in AAU basketball and just in general, what sets you apart from somebody else on the team? Sure. What sets you apart from someone else in your class? What sets you apart from somebody else in your profession? What makes you different? And I think that people lose sight of pushing towards that. So AU basketball is a really big topic here in yep. our area. You know, a lot of kids love basketball. Um, growing up around here, you know, we've all played it. You know, it's changed, yep. but I think the AAU style of just play has taken over just playing. You yeah, know, kids don't really go to the parks anymore. Yeah, um, and just play. They, they always want to be on a team. Um, parents looking to get their kids into AAU basketball, and mm. they may not know what they're getting into. What are yeah. some things you feel as a parent and a coach? that you believe parents should know before they dive into this world? I think it's important to understand uh, you're playing for, um, plan for um, a big commitment. Um, I think that uh, people don't really understand the commitment that AOU is, especially a practice schedule, games, travel, or going all over the Bay Area. We kind of go where the tournaments allow us to go, uh, wherever they're having them from here to San Ramon. Um, I've heard some tournaments, Sacramento, um, Santa Clara or San Jose. Um, so if you're based in the Bay Area or anywhere, you start AAU basketball, you have to understand it is a huge uh, time commitment. Um, the cost of AAU is exponentially greater than it would be like Park and Rec uh, or CYO, which is, well, I believe nothing, or a small fee, 150, yeah, something fee. like that, maybe yeah. 200. Um, but I think that, um, the pay, and I think another thing that's huge that I think we'll get into a bigger topic later on is understanding that at some point you're going to have to work for every minute that you get. Um, it's not a participation thing. It's very much so a earned um, spot. Um, you're not paying for playing time. You're playing for an opportunity to play. You're playing to be on a team. You're playing for practices, but you're not paying for game time. Sure, um, that sure. comes straight with your effort, your ability, uh, and what you're willing to put into it. And I think one of the things that comes along with that is parents get into AU basketball, or the kids get into it. Number one, playing basketball is fun, so you're looking for an avenue for your kid to participate on a basketball team. That's why they come to tryouts and they're yeah. looking for programs. I think number two, kids see their friends playing on AU teams. Yeah. So, hmm, like, I don't want my kid to feel left out. Right. I need to find one. Yeah. Um, and then also you have parents that are deeply rooted in their kid's success to excel at the sport. So then it's yeah. about making sure I find the best program. I need to get my kid ready to go. They've got to specialize at the yeah. age of five. You're right. To yeah. Be ready to, to hoop. Yeah. And so I, th I think there's different reasons that players and parents get into it. Um, and like you said, looking at some of those barriers, cost is definitely it's one of the barriers one. they have. Yes. Um, time commitment. Yes. Um, you know, understanding that, and this is one thing that I also think that people don't understand. You're getting on a team, and I think one of the aspects of just sports in general, not even just playing club travel basketball, yeah. but just playing, you know, basketball in general, there's, in my view, there isn't a big concern about being present. Um, I see parents joining teams and then all of a sudden can't make games because they have other yes, events. They huge. can't make practices. Oh, my kid has this, my kid has that. Right. And the idea of being on a team and committing to another group of individuals to create a collective group, Yeah. to me that's lost to the sense to where everybody's priorities, my kid does this activity and this and this and this, and we can't just make it tonight just because. Sure. It's like, there is no say, hey, I'm joining the team and I'm committing to every one of these other parents and kids here that we're going to be here too. Right. And I think that gets lost. And so yeah. you get people that do play basketball and they play for, you know, three, four or five teams. 
and yeah. they can't be there consistent for any one of them. Right. right. It just becomes about like I need to play and get as much as I can. Yeah. And then the kids that show up there that maybe aren't as good as these more talented kids, they're stuck going into a game. Like I remember a few years ago we played uh, in a rec league, and we got to the uh, semifinals, and there was a team, not our team, but there was another team that was doing really well. Yeah. And they had to forfeit their playoff game because most of the girls played AU basketball. And Man, so that tough. team didn't get a chance to compete that yeah, day. Yeah, that's tough. And the kids that did show up were like crying and it's like, right. Again, I'm all for kids participating, but yeah. if you don't believe you can make the commitment, then don't join. Absolutely. I think just don't join. Like, right. Like, pick one. Because yeah. then you don't put those kids in a position where they get out there and then all of a sudden you crush them because you have a million things on your plate and it's like, well, we're super busy. Well you're really not thinking about anybody else. Right. You know, and that's one of the big issues I have when it comes down to doing too many activities at once. Yeah. You know, well, so my another. kid wants to. It's like, well, yeah, your kid wants to eat candy all day? Like, yeah. Let him? Like, no. Like, yeah. at some point, you've got to create some barriers, right? That's a whole other topic in itself, just talking about, um, you know, multiple sport athletes um, participating in multiple sports in the same season and what kind of commitment that is. So there's definitely a lot to be said there as well. Um, I, I think that um, it, it's really interesting, the idea behind AAU basketball and how parents come into it thinking it's um, something that it's really not. Um, and I think this is a great opportunity to kind of just explain to them what it really is like. Say, for instance, for you, like what are the, what are the benefits of a kid playing AAU basketball in, in your mind? Like what, what are some of the key points that you say, yes, this is – benefit of playing the game in that well before getting to the right. benefits I, I think number one just making sure um you know we, we highlight the fact that aau is an actual organization and so <laughs> we're not trying to yeah. Like, put yeah. them down like right aau there's a ton of different sports in aau you know right. there's football there's track there's type yeah. of dough like so right. aau is an actual organization so I, I think the term gets blanketed yes. in a way where people i'm going to an aau tournament but that's not a sanctioned AAU, AAU, AAU event right so it just you know, somebody decided to rent a gym this weekend and then host a bunch of games and you all showed up. So, you know, you know, we, I guess a better term is club travel basketball. Club basketball. Um, but look at the benefits, you know, not to get on the downside of it, but I think the benefits of it, it you take kids and you're putting them in a position where you're having them compete against what some would say some of the best players in the area. Yeah. Right? And so you're trying to measure up your players – that you believe are talented against other players that are t talented as well, maybe even yeah. more so. Um, it's a great way to kind of measure yourself around other players that are successful in the game. Yeah, um, It's a great way to build connections with teammates and kind of grow and become friends yeah. uh, and build relationships as you get older. Yep. Um, it's a great way to get out there when the families do travel tournaments. And, yeah, it is. You know, they're out there and, you know, they're at the pool. At it's some, a great time. Some hotel and everybody's yeah. just getting to know each other and, Building the relationships, I think, is a big thing, just like anything else. Right. Um, if you're committed to the work, I yes. think it creates – it should be able to create great values, work ethic. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you're coaching and creating an environment that uh, fosters, you know, respect and integrity yeah. um, and teamwork, that, that, that's a great benefit as well. Yeah. Um, but I feel like that, at the heart, that's what sports should be in general. I 100% agree. I think that when you start to get into um, AAU or club basketball, we should call, we should call it, um, I think it's really important to understand that there's a lot that comes with it, but there's a lot that you can get out of it as well. I think that, again, like, like you are saying, th just developing those relationships, those are bonds that last lifetimes sometimes. And you see kids playing on different teams and, hey, I used to play with him, I used to play with him um, growing up. And it just creates these memories that, that you will have. Um, and, again, when you start seeing these kids develop and you start seeing these kids playing with each other, I think also with that, when you say you get to potentially maximize the development that your kid has seeing so many different kids play. When we go to Vegas, there's kids from – all over the country, Midwest, East Coast, the South. Um, so you get to see where you are. Um, I think it definitely is a reality check for some, um, and it helps them maybe come back into the realm of reality and say, hey, I need to get better. We went out there, we play well locally, but when we start getting into these other teams, these other regions, 
It's a whole different brand of basketball. Different. So I think it's super important um, just to, for accountability purposes to go travel. It's, I think it's such a huge benefit to see where you are and when you how you stack up. Um, and as long as you're using that right as motivation to get better, I think that's something that's super important as well. Sure, and kind of to go along with that, I guess looking at some of the, I guess the issues I have, and I always tell people if, yeah, not that I have to, but I feel like if I didn't have to engage in AU basketball, I wouldn't. Yeah, or club basketball. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, I feel that there is too much emphasis on players doing too much too early. Yeah. The amount of time, and again, I'm I'm also guilty of this because our program does. Um, require a lot from players and families as well. Yeah, we do, um, yeah. But I always say, if if we're gonna do this, then let's do this. Let's do it, right? Yeah. Don't 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 go halfway. If you want to play in this style of basketball against really good teams, yeah. Understand things can get downhill real fast. If real fast. And if so making sure that people are prepared as much as possible is, is key. Otherwise, you know, then everyone's upset. Yeah. Um, but I also want to make sure that we're trying to put these kids in the best position to be successful if this is what they're gonna do. Yeah. So. One one of the issues I have, and we talk, and I talked about, you know, just building, you know, character and integrity is, I, f- I feel this brand of basketball tends to create more bullies than I like, right? Like there's, you know, I, I'm not saying names, but yes, I, I, I've talked to kids where, you know, you know, even in high school where it's like, you know, you've got kids because they're talented at basketball, they're, you know. Um, you know, threatening to beat up other players, you know, if they don't yeah. do their homework for them, or <laughs> yeah, you know, these things that you know, I'm. That I'm hearing, I'm getting told by by the players, and it's sad because you get to a point where adults reinforce in these kids' minds that because you're good at basketball, that you get makes away you with a it. good human being. Yeah, it's like no, being good at basketball makes you good at basketball. It doesn't make you a good human being. Like you being a good human being makes you a good you human be, being. Absolutely, not because your handles are good or you have a whole bunch of moves. Right. That just means that you're effective on the basketball court. But when right. you step off of that thing, who are you? Right. And one of the things that I think we miss is. We sacrifice all that because we want the win. Right. And I say we as a basketball culture. Basketball um, community. Everything's built around that. And you, you see videos of kids, you know, they're out there dancing. And I'm all for having fun. But, you know, like last year you guys played in a tournament. And Man. You got kids coming in, you know, and, and they're wearing wigs out there. They're dancing yeah. before doing push-ups. And yeah. I'm watching the coach and some of the parents. I'm like, none of you going to say anything. Nothing. You know you're going to have, you know, a bunch of people that say, man, let the kids have fun. But. It's not. We came to a tournament to play a game. Right. Not so you guys can go ahead and make a YouTube video and try to get likes. Right. So, I mean, I don't know, you could talk about that because you were there. You know, I, I got to be honest with you, man. Like, I've been coaching for a while now, and I think that for me was the single worst game that I was a part of from start to finish, from the parents, the coach, the referees doing nothing. Um, I have, you know, it, it's hard because you, you take your kids, you prepare them, and then when things like that happen, again, like you said, I'm all for kids having a good time. Basketball is a fun, fun, fun uh, sport. Um, you don't want to take the emotion out of it because if you take the emotion out of it, now it's, it's kind of it's stifling for kids, it's stifling for people, um, and you have to be, able to, to be able to express yourself. Basketball is a, a form of expression as well. Um, but that was a disrespect um, that I feel has no place in anything pertaining to youth. Um, it just it just doesn't sit right. And I feel like that was an opportunity for parents, for coaches, for the referees to get involved with the kids to say, hey, this is not how we perform. This is not how we act. Um, this is not correct. And stop it. Because, again, I guarantee it wasn't the last time they did it. I guarantee it wasn't the first time we did it. And if somebody would have said something immediately, that would stop. See, and... You know, obviously we're here doing, you know, our own little show. So, <laughs> yeah. You so. know, but I guess you bring it around to social media and yeah. and the, the the high that it creates for people. Yeah. You know, getting likes, getting followers, seeing that click rate go up, right. um, getting views. That's something that people tend to like gravitate towards. And obviously, you know, we're here so we can try to get those as well. But right. I'm not like subscribe, not, share. Yeah. Click that button. <laughs> those, I'm those put it somewhere. Um, <laughs> but when. Adults are afraid to be adults. Yeah. You allow kids to learn for themselves. And when you continue to allow generations of kids to raise kids and learn from kids, you get adults that are just grown-up kids. Sure. And these kids are going to grow up, 
because an adult didn't want to say no that's wrong right don't do that and all of a sudden what you have are these kids grow up to be adults that continue to foster that same mentality right and that becomes normalized right now at some point when i'm dead and gone who cares like i'm out of here but to me there's a sense of value in telling the next generation no be better that's something that you don't do right you know it's just a prank isn't an excuse it's not you need to be better than that right and i'm not here to to bash on these kids um i'm more disappointed at the adults that didn't do anything about it right um but looking at how do we create a situation where we allow kids to grow better as people and like i said before like I, I'm, I'm more proud of the fact that i've seen kids going to college and you know not to play basketball, but just yeah, going, going to colleges college. yeah. and go out there and have jobs and even seeing some kids that I used to coach now they have kids. Yeah. Like that to That's me wild to me. It's crazy. Yeah. So now it's okay, hopefully there's something that I said to you, and I'm not saying I'm the end all be all of what they've learned in life, but right. hopefully you take if you take one percent of something I ever taught you in life. Right. And that benefited you and now you teach that to your kids in a way where they can become better people, that's the win for me. And I right. think we lose that at times where it becomes more about the win on the court and less about the win in life. Yeah, you know, I feel like it is so much to be said about character. Um, there's been times where I've coached teams where somebody would do a move, the guy would fall, and my players would have a reaction, and I would look at them and say, no. They would apologize later, and they would never do that again. We don't do that. That's not the way to conduct yourself. You have to show self-respect. You have to show restraint, be a good sport. All the things that we grew up learning what sports is and how you're supposed to act is being lost on these kids. Yeah. Because they're really getting into a situation where, again, they're being rewarded for their play, but they're not being disciplined for their actions. And I think that's a huge, huge issue that is easily rectified it's easily stopped. But again, someone just has to say, no, that's not the way we conduct ourselves here. Sure. And I think looking at some of the points that we wanted to get to in terms of what are some of the benefits and what are some of the challenges, I think that top, I think what we just discussed really fits both of those in terms of what sports should be and then what we believe sometimes sports turns into, right? right. Um, and so as a parent looking at joining an AAU program or trying out for, sorry, a club yeah. program, yeah. <laughs> um, looking at some of the things that you want to evaluate a program for, yeah. whether it's from skill development or just character, it's, it's, it's hard to say, hey, like, you know, this is our character because, you know, you can't go in a pass and watch that team do something. Right. So you're kind of going off what you hear people say, mm -hmm. some of the feedback, things you see during over there. As a parent, you're bringing your child into a program to try out. Yeah. What are you asking or what should you ask the director, the coaches? What do you value as somebody that wants to make sure their child is in the best situation possible? Why are you doing this? Why are you coaching? What's your motivation? Um, I feel like a lot of times the motivation is I mean, everybody wants to win. I'm not saying that your motivation shouldn't be to win because everybody wants to win games, but I think it's super important to understand the how, the why. Um, I, I think it's super important also to understand that, again, I have a son, he plays basketball, um, and I feel like if he's going to join a team, I want him to join a team where I feel like I know the person who's going to be um, guiding him. Because at the end of the day, there's some kids who listen to their coach before they listen to their parent. It's just dad's voice, right? My voice becomes dad's voice. My noise is all my head, always in the background. Um, but you know that coach can be a trigger for him that can either take him to new heights or it can grind him down in the dirt. Um, so I think understanding who they are as people, do they have integrity? Uh, do they have humility? Um, are they holding themselves accountable as well? I think that only comes with um, speaking to them just on a personal level, seeing how they act in the game. If I was going to go to an AAU program or a club, club program, I'd go watch them play. How does he coach? Does he yell at the kids? Does he push the kids? Does he scream at the kids? Is he yelling at the refs? Is he just coaching? What is he doing? If something happens, how does he respond? So that's what I would do as a parent. I would go watch a game, see how he coaches to see if that would be a good match for the way my son is motivated. Sure. Because nobody knows my kid like I know my kid. 
I know how he's motivated. I know what would turn him off. I know what would make him go harder. And I know what would make him shut down. So I think that's something that's super important to do. Yeah, and I think as a parent, that's a perspective. Like, I'm not a parent, but I think that's definitely something that you want to find out about because now you have somebody that's, again, we're going back to character and values. Right. Like, they're going to be instilling something into your child. If they're always screaming at the referee just yeah. because, and we've seen coaches that just do that, right. you know, the kids will do that. Yes. You know, or you're going to have somebody that's out there. And again, I get loud. I yell. So do I. Yeah, sure. I try to tell them, I'm usually doing that because I'm just engaged. Right. And when I get on the court, I'm just really excited. Yes. I'm yelling because you did a great play. I'm yes. yelling because you made the wrong play. Right. Um, I'm out there just yelling your name, telling you, like, hey, communicate. So I just want to make sure I'm heard. Right. But I try not to just yell for no reason. I want to make sure that there's a purpose to it. So all context. But I think another question that's also important to ask is, along with that, will a child get playing time? And how will that happen? And then that's always going to be a question that comes up no matter how many times you put out there. Like in every email I send before we invite players to join our team right. and, and accept them, I send out a long email list of expectations. Right. I tell them, like, the only thing you pay for is your child coming into practice right. and their ad- admission into a tournament. Yes. It's like you don't pay for them to play. No. Now, if I'm accepting your child onto a team, sure. I believe they can play, but they still have to earn the minutes that they get, and it's not going to be equal to everybody else right. if they're not demonstrating that they're able to comprehend what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Now, I've got to make sure I coach it right so Correct. they understand it. But right. if they're not focusing, if they're not executing, um, everybody's going to be there to try to make sure that they win the game. Because right. if we don't, no matter what parents say, they're going to be upset. Absolutely. So when we coach games, or you know, I want to make sure I put the team in the best position to be successful. Not right. just win, just, just be successful. Right. And understanding that if I let parents know that from the start, they're going to hear it, but I can always go back to it if right. they ask that question again. Right. Um, when it comes down to parents asking about playing time, I feel like it's okay for them to ask that question. Of course. Um, I just need to make sure that I'm upfront about the expectations and what they're going to get out of it and how their child can earn playing time. Right. Um, but I think that's definitely a question because what I find is, you know, in We've taken kids in the past that maybe shouldn't have played this level, but I, right. I felt like they had the motivation to work and get better. Um, however, once you get out there, what I don't want to do is take on a kid and then just have him sit the bench the whole time. Right. If I don't believe that he can contribute to the team right. effectively during the season, I'd rather have him just keep getting work or join a different league, a rec mm-hmm. league, or school sure. team, something like that, before right. you get into here. But I think one of the things that – if I was a parent, you know, I would want to ask the coach, you know, do you feel like you'd play my child? And if you can't say yes, then I don't want my child playing for the program, not because I'm like, well, they're going to go somewhere else. As a coach, I'm going to trust your expertise. And sure. so what you're saying is that my child isn't ready yet. Yes. So what can I do to help him get ready so that maybe next year when he tries out, this is going to be worth his time? Yeah, I, I think, again, um, we're talking about expectations, and I think that's a great word. Um, the expectation that some parents have when they immediately sign up for club basketball is, oh, great, my son's going to play because all they played before was Park and Rec or the um, CYO. CYO. Everybody plays. It's not club basketball. That's not the way it works. Everything is earned in club basketball. And we're talking about from third graders going up, again, our job as coaches is to coach the game, not coach the player. Now, with that comes with knowing your players and understanding what they need to be successful. But if there's a tight game and your son's played maybe one half or one quarter, am I willing to risk everybody's feelings from the parents to the players, my feelings, am I willing to risk that just because a kid didn't play an extra three minutes or because he lost a quarter. No, because at the end of the day, he did play. Even if it's a little bit, I felt like he contributed a little bit because at the end of the day, it's a team win. So not only would you be upset because your son didn't play very much, and then you would say, and we lost as well. So I think it's super important to make sure the expectation that everybody has is understanding I have to coach the game as a whole. Everybody matters. There's a lot that goes into coaching a full basketball game. 
And I think that as a parent, for me, I understand it because I'm a coach, so it's easy for me to say this. I've co- I coach basketball. I have a son who plays basketball. Um, so I understand both sides of that coin. I want my son to play, but I'm a realist. I understand what he needs. I understand what he needs to work on to get better. Um, and I think, again, it, it, it boils down to knowing your child and understanding if these kids are really good on this team, you have to say, my son's not as good as they are. He's probably not going to play very much. And if that's the case, maybe you need to look at another program. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I agree with all that in terms of are oh, we honest? Or a daughter. I want to make yeah. sure I say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, are we being honest? And I'm talking about from a parent, spe- from a parent, pers- from a parent perspective. Right. And um, from a coach's perspective, am I being honest? Right. So as a parent, am I, you know, honest with what I'm seeing my child or am I seeing through my eyes? Right. You know, or as a coach, am I being honest with the parent or am I just like, ah, I just need some more kids? You know, so for me, I, I, we just held tryouts and we're talking about, you know, holding, you know, a second team for, you know, certain grade levels. Yeah. And saying, you know, yeah, some of these kids look OK, but. Number one, do we really feel like they're ready for this level of basketball? Right. And some of them could be, but do we have enough to feel like we can field a competitive team? Right. Um, like I'm thinking about making sure that it's worth it to everyone involved mm. and not trying to just hold on to players just to hold on to them. Right. If there's another program that has a spot for them, you know, and they can be successful, cool, go yeah, there. Like please. it's not about just being here. Right. Um, but kind of going with that now, looking at the next phase, we talked about, you know, what parents should be asking, what are the expectations in terms of values that they can get out of it. Yeah. Uh, this is a tournament style system. Right. So it's not a league, it's not a season. A lot of people ask like, so what league do they play in? Like we don't play in leagues. Right, we do not. We play in tournaments. And yes, tournaments are managed by different organizations. Right. Um, in different areas. And they can be on any weekend. You can play against any different team. Right. What are you telling parents to prepare for when they find out that their kids are gonna be playing in these basketball tournaments? You know, you have to prepare for, um, you have to make sure you understand that when these tournaments pop up and we're driving all over the Bay Area to get to literally San Ramon, Santa Clara, San Jose, Sacramento, Fairfield, um, all the way down to Marin, Sausalito. I mean, prepare for driving a great distance and maybe not seeing your son or daughter see the floor very much. I think that's. Uh, I think that also adds to the expectation. Like we drove all this way, and he didn't play. She didn't play very much. Exactly. Why? <laughs> Why? And, and again, as a parent, I get it. I understand. But more than anything, you should be asking yourself. Okay, if the question is why they didn't play very much, are you looking at the game from the coach's perspective? Are you looking at the game from his teammates' perspective? Can you honestly say? that your son is one of the best five, one of the best 10 out there he should be playing. If you can say that, then there's a problem. But if you can be honest with yourself and understand it, um, I think there's always room for improvement. Um, But I think it's just really a matter of understanding where your child is on the basketball team, what pecking order, because there's always a pecking order. If you look at any basketball team, there's maybe one or two kids if you're lucky more than that, that can take any shot they want from anywhere on the floor and the coach isn't going to say a word. No parent is going to say a word. Or is, is, your, is that your kid? Actually, I've had some parents that do. So. <laughs> well, um, right? the, the question is. They're no longer part of the program anymore. <laughs> right. Is, is that your son? Is, is, yeah. is that your daughter? Is, is your daughter one of them? Your child, is your child one of them? If not, then maybe you have to take a step back and say, okay, why isn't my son playing? Come talk to us. We have no, no reason to lie. We're here to help your son get better. He's obviously good enough to be on the team. Come talk to us. We'll explain why. Now, are you willing to put that work in? That's the question. So I think going to these tournaments to understand that you may drive a great distance. But, again, playing time isn't guaranteed. Yeah, playing time isn't guaranteed. And then going along with kids going to tournaments and parents traveling, um, is that about you or the kid? So is it's it a great because question. you had to drive all this way? Right. Or, you know, if it really make you happy, if I came up to you and said, hey, I know you're on the team. Right. But right now your kid really isn't ready. Don't come out this weekend. Would you, right. What would you say? You'd be like, oh, my God. Like, You'd be very upset. Why, my kid. I'd be upset, But then too. you get out there and it's like, well, you know, we drove all this way. So, right. you know, pick one. 
you know, and that's also comes down to our responsibilities. Like, well, if I don't believe I can play your kid, sure. But through tryouts, you know, you have a small sample size to kind of see what they do. But right. for the most part, you try to pick kids that you feel like really can contribute to the team and can play at a level that's you know competitive amongst the competition. Right. Um, but yeah, you often ask them like, is it because you drove all this way, and this is just about you? Because right. I understand like, this is for your kid. Right. Right. This is for them to have that experience, and sometimes they're not going to play all the time. Right. If all you're focused on their minutes, you're not focused on them being good teammates. You're not right. focused on their attitudes when they're on the bench. Right. If a kid has bad body language, I'm not playing him. I'm sitting them the whole time. And if you don't like that, you know, the doors aren't locked. You can go to any coach, any high-level college coach. There's interviews. They tell these parents. They tell these kids. I go to games. I sit in the stands. I see what happens when they come out. Is their head down? Are they engaged? Are they clapping their teammates up? There's coaches that said they have walked out of highly recruited players' gyms and decided to not recruit them based on their body language alone. That is huge, and not many people understand that. Yeah, and I think that goes back to our first point about just like character. You know, character. I'm, I'm not saying it's always gonna be perfect, but no. when you watch a kid's behavior and you see it consistently, you know, okay, yeah, that's that's kind of who they are right now. Right. Um, and when I want to put you on other kids, I'm looking for kids that have the same values. Right. If all the kids are good, then everything's equal. So right. now I'm just looking at like, what are the the things that maybe you don't work on, which right. is your body language, the your intangibles, emotions, like mm -hmm. your attitude. Right. Um, those have to fit. Uh, but not just the kids. That also goes to parents. Absolutely. So, you know, if, if there was a tryout for families, I'd feel like I'd have that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> let's host a game and let's see let's how you react. Because one sure. of the things that parents get out there and they don't, they don't know is when they go to these tournaments, you're around a lot of adults that sometimes don't know how to control themselves. Sure. They'll say things that are extremely inappropriate yes. to other people's children. Yes. Um, they'll say things that they would never say to anybody in any other part of their life, right. except that moment they feel it's okay. Right. Now you go to like, you know, an NBA game or, you know, any type of pro game and you have people that heckle the players. Sure. Even that becomes an issue. Right. But now you're talking to nine, 10, 12, yes. 13, even high schoolers. Yes. Like, these are other people's children and those parents are probably two seats away from you. Right. And now that creates an issue. And so I think preparing for understanding that you have adults that are going to say, I'm just super emotional. Right. If you're that emotional, don't come to a child's event. Right. Don't. Like, don't. If, if you can't control your emotions enough to where you feel like you can't stop cussing at somebody's 12 year old kid. Right. Stay home. And there's a huge difference between cheering your team on, right? Getting loud for them, getting rowdy for them, cheering them on and cussing at kids, yelling at kids, talking bad about the coach, just saying inappropriate things. There's two different things. I'm all for, I have some really, really amazing rowdy parents. They get super hyped for their kids playing. And that's an amazing thing. Super encouraging to the other team's kids, clapping everybody up. Um, but there's a difference between yelling and screaming at children in a negative way and yelling and screaming in a positive way. There's two sides to it. So I think, again, you know, when you say that, you talk about character, it's across the board from kids to their parents, to the coaches. And I think that is something that's definitely lost um, when you're talking about club basketball and just sports in general. Um, I think there's a lot of negative aspects that come out of people with what pertains to sports. Um, but honestly, I don't feel like there's a room for negativity in youth sports. It, it just shouldn't be there because, again, these are young people. Um, they're trying to grow, and some people, their experiences will kind of make them who they end up being. Um, yeah. And I and think that's really where we're easy kind to of do the gatekeepers of that. Yeah. Like you said, you get a lot of parents that come up to us and like, yeah, my kid, they don't hear my voice anymore, but they listen to you. And understanding all, that all the time. for some kids, you're going to be that voice that they listen to. Yeah. You know, what you say matters. That's why it's so important to make sure that we're aware of what we're saying and how we act around kids, not saying we're perfect. Yeah. But, you know, that's a responsibility if you're going to be in a role of a coach. Yeah. Um, looking at, I think, probably the most important part that a parent should find out is how are you going to make my kids better at basketball? Yes. Now, we talk about, you know, we're looking for kids that can play basketball. Right. But as coaches, we're still responsible for their development and growth. I always feel like when it comes to the game time, I'm trying to coach the games. There is an element of where I'm still trying to make sure you understand the game and I'm right. still coaching you. Still coaching. But 
when it comes down to practices and putting together practice plans and yeah. whatever systems are running and the fundamentals, teaching kids, you know, how to set proper screens. My like, goodness, that's, that's a I'm huge one. Teaching your kids how to make cuts to the basket, yep. teaching your kids how to seal, teaching your kids how to duck in, teaching your kids, you know, you know, different screening variations, teaching kids how to defend, um, you know, which hand is going to be defending towards the ball, which, right. you know, on the pass, do I jump to the ball? Like, these right. are things that I'm going to be responsible for making sure your child understands, you know, to the best of my ability. Right. And that's what I'm always going to do. Like, when they leave here, I want to make sure that I believe – we help make them better players. Right. And so what are the standards that go into that? I think is definitely important. Like, how do you as a coach help players get better? I don't, I don't get that question a lot. I get right. questions, how much does it cost? How much does it cost? It's not cheap. Right. I get questions. How well, far do you have to travel? How far do you travel? Mm-hmm. When are practices? What time are they? Where right. are they at? Right. I never get, how are you going to help my kid get better at basketball? Right. And I feel like that's one thing, like you said before, asking a question, why do you coach? It's like, well, I coach because I'm hoping that something I teach your child is going to make them the best human being they can be right. when they become us, adults. Yes. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's why I use basketball. Right. So I can do that one thing. Right. So when they walk out of here and they're adults, when they have to make the choice between doing right and wrong, I'm hoping something I showed them in life made them choose right. Right. And so that's it. I mean... <laughs> You know. at, at the core of it, like I said, you know, when I was growing up, basketball still means a lot to me. Basketball was like therapy for me. When I had something thing going on, something I was thinking about, I was just go shoot outside. Always made me feel better. Um, so basketball to me is near and dear to my heart and always will be. Um, I know the impact just being able to have that outlet can have on, on, you, on, on a child, on a young mind, um, helping them clear their head and clear space, reset. So, you know, just being around basketball and having the impact and having the ability to impact um, a kid's decision, um, how they hold themselves, um, helping them develop their character, um, what they deem important, their values. Um, I think that's, um, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't buy that. You can't pay for that. Yeah. Well, depends. <laughs> <laughs> depends. Well, you shouldn't have to, especially <laughs> if you're um, putting your kid in a situation where, Again, like Robin said, there's plenty of parents who say, yeah, he doesn't listen to me. Like, I tell him that all the time, and now he's listening to you. So we can be that voice for you. Um, we can be that, that uh, media um, to, to help. Because, again, we want people to become good people in their community. Um, and if they're able to do that, and, again, if we just had a little piece of that, uh, we had a little bit of a reason, again, making the right choices, making sure they understand what it is to have integrity, what it is to hold yourself accountable. Um, I, I think that's uh, invaluable. Yeah. So I think kind of to wrap this up, we went through a whole lot. Yeah, we did. <laughs> and yeah. obviously we're, you know, trying to stick on topic. But yeah, I think a lot of this is important. And I think to kind of wrap up some of the things that we feel parents should understand about AU basketball, uh, club basketball, travel basketball, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Um, number one, it's going to require a lot of your time. Now, you can choose to be there, or you can be someone that's always kind of there half the time because yep. you have too many things going on. Right. Um, but understand that a lot's going to be demanded of you in terms of practices mm-hmm. and workouts and tournaments yep. uh, for a duration of time. If that's something that you and your family are willing to do, then cool. If right. it's not, then maybe that's not the format. And this isn't the only way to get better at basketball. No. So you have to make the choice if you're willing to deal with the schedule, right. if you're willing to commit to the program, the team, the other players and families that are also there. Yes. Or you kind of like just making it up as you go and feeling like you don't have a responsibility to be there for the other people that sign up as well. Yeah. Um, you're going to be held to a high standard of play. Right. Uh, understand that when you get out there, this isn't, you know, like your school or rec league teams or elementary right. middle school kids. There is no real mercy rule. Like, sometimes you'll have it to where, like, you know, teams can't press. Yeah. But if a score gets 100 to 5, that's what it is. That's what it is. Right? And right. not that that's what we're aiming for, but you're going to run into teams where they're just severely outmatched. And that's something that you're going to have to be prepared to understand. You yes. never know who your opponent's going to be from week in to week out. Right. Um, that's another topic in itself before you go on. Mm-hmm. The way a club basketball teams are built. Playing the six, five, ten year olds. That is <laughs> um, another topic that I'm sure we'll get into <laughs> as lessons. we continue to do these things. <laughs> and two kids. Uh, I, don't, I, didn't to, I didn't mean to cut you off, but in my head, I immediately was like, oh, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, you run into some buzzsaw sometimes. And 
Um, but yeah, it, I, I I didn't mean to cut you off. But when no, you said yeah. that, I was like, oh man, I was thinking that too. I was kidding. like, yeah, man, you're playing the team and the kids out there playing, and it's like, yeah, I don't know if you're actually. I, I know you're not 10. No. You dropped your kids off at the babysitter before you came here. I, I know you <laughs> no, did. He's, he's watching Dad play. <laughs> Watch out, son. Daddy about to drop 40. Oh, man. Like, All right, who's it's that? It's dope. Oh, it's my kids. Out yeah, here. I'm How out here. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm 11. I'm 11. Yeah. Oh, man. No, um, yeah, so just understanding, like, if you're out there to play, just play. Just play. And you're going to have to kind of deal with the emotions of it, just like we do as coaches. Right. Um, Again, it's going to be costly, and at least for us, you know, when people ask us why we charge what we charge, number one, you know, this is our job. Number two, yeah. um, the cost of this really adds up when you look at renting facilities, yes. which is the biggest cost. The biggest cost. If we cost. didn't have to pay so much for renting facilities, right. I would drop prices. Of course. Right? Because I wouldn't need all that money for all that. But because facilities take up the majority of – our annual expenses, right? Um, and they didn't get cheaper. No, they did not. The they they got more expensive. Oh, nobody um, was renting. I and they got that harder money. to find. But yeah, it, it, it's it's weird to me because again, people take advantage of it. It's a business. I, yes, I, I can't tell you what to charge for your space. No, but you know, it's it's not like everything's getting more expensive because people say the supply chain and this and yeah. everything else. Yeah, it's like there's no supply to the gym. Like, it's, right. Right? it's like, what happened? Oh no. Like our gym time had to get shipped in. It's like, no, it's, it's just demand. It's just here. So people right. understand that, you know, people want the space and we can charge more for it and they're going to pay for and it. And they're going to pay for and it. We don't really have a choice. Right. So because of that, I have to factor it into the cost and that's why things get a little more expensive, but right. it's not because like, you know, Hey, you know, give me all your money. It's, it's sometimes because like, if you want to do this, that's what we need to actually function. Right. To some degree. Right. Um, so understanding that, you know, financial obligations are a part of it, you know, if that's something you feel you can handle. Now, I don't want to just turn people away just because of that. Right. But understanding, like, you know, it can't just be charity for everybody, you know. So right. we have to also look at the fact that things need to get paid for. Sure. And if they don't, then that's an issue. So right. um, I think lastly, just understanding, like, is, is this where you want your kids to be right. when you're playing for an AU program? Do you right. feel comfortable with the coaches? Do you feel comfortable with the other families and other players? Right. Um, if you have a chance to get to see them, you know, and that's not always possible because usually the season's done, so it's not like you go watch tournaments out of nowhere like the previous season. So right. you're hoping that what you see is what you get. It's, it's face value. And right. then once you get there, sometimes you realize, yeah, this is I love it. It's sometimes great. You realize, mm, yeah, I've not right see, for me. No, this – Oh my God! I right. don't know. It's so, not right for me, and and that's fair, and that's okay. Um, you know, again, I, I've had several players who bounce from AAU team to AAU team. Excuse me, club team to club team, um, trying to find that fit. Um, and and there's nothing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that in a sense. I think that um, as long as you maintain your commitment that you're making to that team and not leave mid season, unless something egregious happens, right? I mean, if something really happens that you feel is unsafe or you feel like it was really inappropriate, by all means, like. You know, do what you feel is best for for your child, but um, there's nothing that says you have to stay with one program. There's nothing that says you have to stay with one coach. There's not there's, there's you're not signing a, a ten day a, t- a ten year contract with 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 a, with a coach. If I'm to play by, say, hey, I'm gonna be with you for five ten years. You're not doing that. So um, finding that fit to where you feel like you're going to get the best, uh, or they're going to get the best out of your child, and you're going to be able to really fall in and really buy in with that program and develop that trust that you need for a coach to have your child. I think that's super important. So, you know, Robin, you know, we have plenty of programs that we can help your child get better. You don't have to play on the AAU team. You can play for whoever you want, but we can help you get better if, if that's what you want. So I think that's super important to make sure that you understand what you're looking for. And if that jives with what that coach is offering, great. But if it doesn't, that's okay. Go somewhere else. And see what you can find. And if you feel like I can get work with a specific team or a specific coach, you can always come to us. You can go to somebody else. But I think it's important to understand that you do have the options. Um, and that's one thing that parents do have is options. A lot of options. A lot of options. Um, so to kind of go from there, I, th- I think we've given, you know, we've talked a lot. But hopefully yeah. we've given you some information that could be beneficial to right. families and and athletes looking to get into it. Again, this is meant more for families that are looking to get into a right. club club style basketball that haven't done it yet. And some things that maybe you might want to think about before 
even engaging in this at all or right. once you are looking for programs things that you might want to ask or look at yeah um again there's a ton of other things but we're not gonna kind of go through all those today we just hopefully give you some things that we feel like are, are valuable as as coaches and a parent uh that can be helpful so yeah. from there it's up to you to make your own decision but right. this isn't to tell you one way or the other i think it has a lot of benefits to it yeah i also think there's some issues to it yeah um so you just have to deal with you know some of the facts and kind of see are you okay with this are you not and then make a decision that's best for you and your family and yeah. go from there um but yeah i think that's it i think that's it i think we made them 10 percent more prepared for au basketball what do you think 10 percent. i'm gonna go 10 more percent 10 more percent. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take that 10 percent at mine there we go that's so what we, we do say it's 20 percent. Hey, we build that's yeah, why yeah. we build that's how that's we get consistent build. anyways folks that's episode one sfba all right Check us out again, episode two. Make sure you get on there. You're going to like and subscribe. Hit that our bell. channel. Hit those buttons. Yep. Smash the like buttons. Yeah. Um, leave some comments, some questions. We'll get back at you. But uh, again, appreciate you guys checking us out for episode one. Yep. And uh, episode two will be out All right. not too long from now. All right. Peace. Yep.